someone to be able to speak English in Australia, I think it's the key to being able to be part of society. If you can't communicate, you feel isolated, you feel lonely, you're not connected. Language is the ability to be able to communicate with each other and to make connections. When we communicate, we express what's in our heart. We can tell a story, tell where we came from, tell them what we want in this world. But when you can't communicate with someone, when you can't tell them what's in your heart, that's like building a barrier between you and others, like building a wall around you. It's crucial for children to be able to speak fluently and be able to express themselves. Because if you don't, you'll be like that little bird in a cage. You won't be able to fly. You have wings, but you're restricted. The percentage of our students that come from non-English speaking backgrounds is extremely high. Generally, the students that we get here have come because there's been conflict and trauma in their homeland. Sleeping in your bed, thinking, oh, any minute something's gonna land on your house. We're basically just trapped in this one area that's just full of our people. We cannot go outside that area, otherwise you'll get killed. We had to escape, otherwise we wouldn't be alive today. You really don't have a lot of choice, you have to flee. And some of the stories where people have fled their home countries are just tragic. Some of them have come from really traumatised backgrounds. They're not trusting of people immediately, so to win them, like that is the first battle. If you understand where they're coming from culturally and the experiences they've had, you have a really good opportunity to build a, a safe and good relationship with the students that actually then the barriers just break down. If you feel uncomfortable, if you don't feel safe, if you feel nervous or anxious, you're not going to be the best version of yourself. You're not. The whole process of settling in and feeling comfortable in their learning environment begins immediately on arrival. And we let them feel, make sure that they feel that they're part of us now. It was a privilege for us to study here because they make sure that you feel home. All the support that we had, not just myself, my family, we felt more like home. We settled in much more easier and if it wasn't for them, I don't know what, what we would have done when we came here. For us to actually have a program that accelerates their language acquisition is just crucial because they can't access the mainstream curriculum until their English is at a high enough level for them to comprehend what's going on. Everything that we do for them here lays a foundation for their future learning. And if we can do it right, then we're one step closer to ensuring that they have a better life. Without language, people can't participate in the society, so it's just absolutely critical. It is the main need. Uh, and beyond that, children need to be able to engage in the Victorian curriculum, and that's in English. So we have to be able to teach students to be able to speak English, understand English, listen to English and write in English, so they can participate in all of the structures that are part of the transactions of a society. I've been here for a very long time and there's always been an EAL program and originally um, it was through the education department sending out an EAL teacher going by the data so we ran just a normal EAL program always been withdrawal and that may not be the model in in many schools. We've decided over time on the basis of evidence that a withdrawal program is the best way to achieve the outcomes that we need to achieve. So we've had to always bring our students out because they've come with no English generally. So it didn't work for us to have EAL operating in the classroom. That was when I started thinking, maybe there's a better way to structure this program. Maybe we do need to um, have our program in stages. As the years have passed, it has become a bigger consideration that we've had to cater for because our school is almost an AAL school. 
We built on that. We saw the potential for success and the growth in children. Like all the programs that we do, if something's working, we put more money and more resources into it and that's why it's grown to the stage it has now. And it's been driven by uh, Jenny McKay in the first instance, who headhunted some fantastic teachers along the way. Everybody please take six cards. Don't look at them, just take them from the top. Off you go and then pass them on to the next person. So the EAL program at Dandenong North is a three we call it a three-tiered program. Um, we have our new arrivals program that caters for children who have been in the country for less than 12 months. And then we have a transition program for children who have been in the country for more than 12 months, but are leading into the mainstream classroom. So they're, they're still not quite ready to access mainstream curriculum. So that's our second phase. And then our third phase, we just call it EAL, and it's catering for students who were either born in Australia or have been in Australia, say, for more than three or four years. So it's targeted to meet the needs of children at each specific level and we identify their learning needs quite quickly because of the way that the program is structured. It's much more than just a um, language based program. To build on hope and purpose are important elements of that program and to make people know that they are part of a big family when they've left their families behind is also very important too. It's a program that we've had to develop over a long period of time as our cohort of students has changed. Over time, we've had students from the former um, Yugoslavia, Greeks, Italians, Lebanese, and I think when I arrived, it was uh, moving into, there were, there were Turkish students, uh, still some Greek students coming through, um, Romanians, the Romanians started to come out. We have currently lots of children who are coming from Afghanistan and Pakistan because of the um, unrest that's happening there. We also get students from Iraq, Syria, also are getting students from Sri Lanka as well. The area of Dandenong's always been an area where new arrivals will settle. So we get a range of students, those who are refugees and have had limited schooling and we also get students who have had age equivalent schooling in their home country because their parents have chosen to resettle in Australia. So there's really two types that we cater for. There you are my lovelies. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. For us? Most schools only have one stage, just EAL in general, um, if they have any EAL students. Um, sometimes they might not even have a program at all and the student will just be in the classroom full time. However, obviously at Daniel North Primary School we do have that three-tiered approach and that really allows us to cater for each stage, um, making sure that they are getting what they need and that they feel more comfortable um, by the end of the program to be in the classroom. Can somebody put up their hands and tell me a conjunction? Do you remember what a conjunction is? Conjunction. You good girl, a joining word. Did you use a joining word in your speaking? Yes. My role in the EAL program is the new arrivals teacher. So I teach the students who have just come from another country and they don't know how to speak English. So I'm their first port of call in the education system in Australia. So I get to help them learn how to adjust being in a classroom. Some students have never been in the class before because of their backgrounds. So I get the pleasure of helping them learn classroom routines, classroom language, as well as learning how to speak, listen, read and write. Because but, but. you, but excellent and fantastic. So beautiful. Daily routine starts with um, listening and speaking about common topics. So the weather, the date, seasons, colours, shapes, animals, food they like, just to get them comfortable and talking to each other. Also talking about what they already know, so then they already get that little safety before we start delving into things that they may not know so well. A noun is a name of person, place, thing, animals, 
beautiful guys everyone so good we help them generate meaningful sentences by giving them worked examples which is one of the hits and giving them sentence starters to initially know what a meaningful sentence would look like the other fish fish, fish. how do you spell fish f i s h in the new arrivals program, they might be working on writing a very simple recount. So then when they move on from new arrivals program into my program transition, I'm aware of what the new arrivals teacher has previously, the foundation that's been laid with those children, the learning that's happened. And so then I build on the learnings from the new arrivals program and target the needs specifically. Abby, put it in a sentence for me. Oh yeah, Fabio is good at long, running long distance. Fabio is good at running long Dis distances. So in the transition stage, we focus on speaking and listening, reading and writing. Um, on a typical day, I would go through maybe some sound flashcards, focusing on different sounds. Uh, we'd look at some spelling, um, focus on sounds that they need help with. Reading, we would focus on their comprehension of what they've understood, obviously how they read as well. And writing, we'd make sure that we're using proper punctuation and structure. You know, there's different text types that we need to make sure that they understand this is what's in a narrative or this is in a recount. So we start then adding more details and we break it down into looking at the, um, the text structure more specifically and the, and the linguistic features that are necessary to ensure that the writing's cohesive and meaningful. So at each level, because we work so closely together, we're able to know what each stage is doing and then build on to that. Two, long or short? Two, long. T -O -O long. long. Good. The main purpose of our EAL program is to get these students ready to be able to work in their classrooms more independently. One of my main focuses is the vocabulary. So to make sure that the children are front loaded with vocabulary that they're likely to use in their classroom. The children um, at that stage are very much more comfortable in the school environment. They're also very much more capable in terms of their understanding and use of English. So it's a wonderful stage that the children are in and when they come to me, I adore them obviously. and. I do a lot of language experience, shared experiences so that we can get involved in activities and tasks together and then write and talk and read about these. They breach like whales. Good girl. And you missed what word when you were... Like. Yeah. I heard you say it, you just forgot to write it. Good job, darling. Off you go. I like to do songs and rhymes to make them feel comfortable and I often do that particularly at the beginning of the year we do some rhymes and songs and it sort of takes away their inhibitions then they start talking and it's the best way I think to get them feeling confident and comfortable. What's the first key word there Jinston? Most. Most? Yeah. Who can help? Spend. Spend. Most spent. Good. Most of the time is spent eating leaves. What's the next key word? There have been many students that have come through the EAL program over the years and it's actually really lovely to see how they have developed and grown. So you know, they've come in, they've not got a word of English, they don't understand how schools operate in Australia. They proceed through the new arrivals program, through transition and into EAL and you see the growth, you see how their understanding of language and their understanding of school develops and how they become competent learners um, in English and in the school system. I think the EAL program at Daniel North has a perfect balance. We're able to cater for the emotional needs, um, practical needs of the children as well as the academic needs. And once all of those things are covered, they're able to learn at the rate they need to, to be able to go into the classroom. And I think we cover it beautifully. Australia is a great place to live because, Nagina? There's no war. There's no war. Australia is a great place to live. Everyone is kind. Because everyone, everyone is kind. Everyone is kind. Abby? Fair. Fair. Yeah, Thank fair. you. Cheyenne? Kenya. Everyone cares. 
Okay, so Australia is a great place to live because it's a free country. It's a free country, fabs, and they have no education in the school. If this program did not exist, it would be a very grim and sad situation where the newly arrived students will be in a mainstream classroom. They will be sleepy, tired, because of the overload of sensory input. Because of the new environment and the new language being spoken around them, they may feel intimidated, they may not feel safe, they won't talk if that's the case. But they come to Transition and EAL, it's smaller group, they feel comfortable with every because everyone is at the same level as, as each other. From a teacher's perspective in the classroom, it would be extremely challenging. The curriculum is already quite dense and challenging and classroom teachers have got a really large range of students that they have to meet the needs of on a daily basis. Having a child with no English or little English adds another layer to it, another dimension. If you have a classroom full of maybe 28 students, and you've got one student in that class that's come to the country with no English, they definitely need a more one-on-one -on -one intensive small group program to help them catch up to where they are with the rest of their peers. New arrival students and EAL students really do need a different type of um, program and teaching. It has to be very oral based and it needs to have lots of visuals and needs to be broken into very small steps of instruction because what we don't want is for our class teachers to have to slow down the instruction rate of the majority of students. We've got intervention programs here that will bring those children up, but we can't bring down what it is that all the children need. You know, we're, we're trying hard to make sure our high achieving kids get what they need. Our children who are working at standard have to be taught at that level. And our children who are still learning or have learning gaps have to be catered for as well. Having this program just ensures that the needs of REAL students are met specifically. Think of a noun, a verb, and an adjective for. Let's do one together, okay? Can you think of a noun, something, a name of a person, place, animal, or thing, that happens in summer? Sunscreen. Sunscreen, beautiful. Sunglasses. We have a special program called the Reception Program. And that Reception Program is the first port of call. So we have one particular teacher that works with those children. Those children are assessed, they're given a thorough assessment so that prior to going into it being allocated to a classroom, we've been able to see what additional intervention programs they may require, any counselling that they may need. We will identify whether they need to see a speech pathologist. We'll identify whether there's a hearing problem. We also will check to see if their eyesight is in need of any support. A teacher that we think would be best suited for that child, um, which children in the classroom might they get on with well, you know, we do try to match up where there might be some language similarities so that just for basic needs, they've got a buddy. Caroline will assess students academically, also make anecdotal notes on anything to do with their behaviour or any other additional needs that she thinks um, need to be addressed. So when they arrive at the classroom door on a Friday afternoon, they're shown where to line up, they have a, their last session with the class, they have a seat to sit in, all their books are there for them, their bags have a place. So by Monday morning, they're ready to start and, and everything's familiar to them. So then they don't have that fear over the weekend of what's going to happen. So it is a very smooth transition and it's had a, a large impact on the calmness of classrooms. Teachers know what to expect, they have an ILP already organised for them. The children know where they've got to go and at what times or they're picked up by other children going to maybe EAL or a particular intervention. So it's actually four phases. We, we're saying it's three phases, but that reception phase needs to be um, acknowledged because it does a lot just to calm not only the children, but the parents as well. It's as simple as it seems, a twinkle in your eyes, the way that time slows. I'm from Afghanistan. 
and I've been in Australia for around two, between two and three years. I came from Pakistan and I've been in Australia for about three years. I've been in Australia for I think five years and I came from Afghanistan all the way here. I've been in Australia for about three years. My dad came first on a boat and then he made our passport so we came here. I came here when I was six, so six years I've been here. In my own country I lived with my mum because my dad came like around um, four years ago. He came here and then um, uh, he helped us to come to Australia and I was like, yes. It was an amazing feeling. I didn't know how he looked. He looked like different and like it was like the best feeling you can ever have when you've been away from someone so long and then you see them. I was like really emotional and then I really loved seeing my dad because I haven't seen him in, for like a long time and then when I saw him I was like really happy. So before you think to rip yourself apart, open up my heart and you'll find love. When I came to Australia I didn't really know any English. I couldn't understand anything. When I came I just knew hi and bye and nothing else. I didn't really understand what people were saying. So it kind of felt like I didn't belong like here. When somebody asked me anything, like I was too shy to talk to them. When I went to EAL, it was pretty good. I felt like I was belonging there. I felt like I was learning more English, getting better. It has helped me a lot. My English, reading, writing. Now, when we go to classroom, if like, our teacher says some things I kind of do understand that. In grade four, I didn't really know how to make sentences, like proper. So when I came to transition, it really helped me. They helped me a lot by like, um, like each word and each word, and then they just took me to here now and that I can talk. And like at that time, like I, I always uh, tell them like, what does this word mean? What does that word? And then when they said it, like the meanings, and then I, I knew where to like uh, where to use it in the, in a sentence. So usually at home. After Taekwondo, I go and help my mum with her homework. We kind of play teacher-teacher at home. She's usually the student, and then I teach her, and then the next day she goes to school and like be, be proud of herself that she knows those things. But sometimes if it doesn't work out, the next day we work on the same thing, so she actually gets it. When I first came, I was, um, and I was happy to be in here, and then like, and now it's, the, it's, it's about to end, the school's about to end, and then I'm really sad to leave the transition. I just uh, like this room, and it's just like my second family. Uh, my favorite part about the school is the teacher and all the friends and studi students, how they support us. I like how they're friendly. My friends and the teachers and the students, because they really care about other people. They make sure that you're part of it. Yeah, they help you a lot. I feel it's like a family, like my second family, because it's just like everyone's um, caring about each other. Like we all use the four C's, which is cooperation, courtesy, common sense, and care. I think Australia is the best place for me to live. I just love it. Open up my heart and you'll find love. So the students, as they move through the different parts of the program, once they're um, mainstream, we can see that they've done the catch-up, they've caught up to their peers and performing very well, and as results in things like NAPLAN and other testing that's done within the classroom demonstrates that this movement has um, progressed and they're, they're on track with their peers whether it's a formative assessment, just by us listening into the conversations that students are having, any form of summative assessment, all of our testing that we do, whether it's 
a, a pre-post writing sample piece just to see what these students can produce in a writing. It just shows how much they have developed by going through the EAL program. We track the children who are attending EAL and, and undertaking the NAPLAN assessments very closely. If you look at um, the NAPLAN results and you, you analyse them carefully, what we find is that it's the EAL kids who are often doing the best in terms of student learning performances. They've been taught explicitly spelling, they've been taught grammar, um, they've been looking at model text. There's a, there's a range of skills that we can teach them that will actually show us, yes, they're well on the way to understanding what quality writing is. As a writing extension teacher, um, I was actually quite surprised to see the amount of children or students that we've had come through EAL to attend or be eligible to attend the writing extension. A student needs to be working above their curriculum level and to have EAL students, children that have come in from a new country and not speak a word of English and be in a new arrivals program in year one and then they come in in year five and I have them as writing extension. It's just amazing. One of the most uh, exciting developments of this program occurred in 2018 when we had the opportunity to partner with um, Emerson Specialist School. We've had many um, ongoing relationship uh, endeavours with that school over the years, but this has been the biggest, where for the first time in a specialist school, uh, John Mooney decided to try to put together an EAL component, and we matched that with our Talk for Writing initiative, and um, we worked together because without the EAL experience background, uh, it would have been hard for them, it would have taken them longer. So we were able to work with them and do some PD, combine PD, and then uh, share experiences and get that program up and running. So it was a fabulous uh, opportunity. What we see in our families is that they have risked everything to get their, their children to this country to give them the best possible opportunities in life. Mostly families leave because of uh, economic circumstances or war. And who wouldn't want to leave if you're dodging bombs and, uh, and landmines and, uh, and your faith is under challenge from um, a different belief system and your assets have been annexed, if you like, or taken away from you. So you really don't have a lot of choice. You have to flee. And, um, and some of the stories where people have fled their home countries are just tragic. Some of our students come from detention centres, straight from detention centres as well. You know, whether on Christmas Island or whether it may have been in another country where they were probably treated quite harshly. I have noticed, I've found that it is harder to um, teach children who've been through a detention centre or who have been um, traumatised. We have had parents who have kept themselves together just to get their children here and once they're in school and settled, they have breakdowns. If there is something on their mind and they're always going back to something that might have happened in their home country, whether it was an attack of some sort. Uh, they're not going to feel comfortable enough to learn about what they're supposed to be doing. They're going to be distracted. In some cases, I'm sure that children are reluctant to talk about the experiences they've been through. What we can do is, is provide a new pathway now for them and, and new experiences that are positive and rewarding and restore their faith in human nature. When we were back in Afghanistan, um, as you know, it's a war zone country and um, in the area that we were, it was surrounded with Taliban and everything. So I got family members killed in front of my eyes and 
they were gonna take my dad away, so we had to escape. We had to escape, and my parents got contacted with smugglers, and they brought us this way towards Australia, and we had to escape, otherwise we wouldn't be alive today. I think what shaped who I am today the most would be my primary school, the ESL classes that I attended. Because when we moved from Afghanistan to Australia, uh, not only myself, but my mom and my siblings, we couldn't read or write the alphabet. So we had to start everything from scratch. Um, we had no friends or family over here. And when my mom moved to Australia for a better life, like everybody else who does, but mainly it was for our education. Because in Iran, we, could, we were not allowed to attend a normal government school. And so mom was like, we need to find a better place. And Australia was the one for us. So we moved here. Um, it was very, I was very nervous. Coming to Dandong North Primary School with no English and not understanding the culture at all, it wasn't just those two being the factor. Um, I also didn't go to school before that at all in Afghanistan. So it was all new to me, not understanding English at all. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to say. I remember the first few weeks I was very nervous. I wasn't talking to anyone. I had short mushroom haircut sitting in the back of the class. My peers were very nice. They were trying to include me, but I really couldn't because I couldn't understand what they were saying. It, you feel like you're deaf because you can't communicate. You can't understand what they're saying. The only thing I could read was their facial expressions and their emotions. And then I was like, okay, they're smiling. So that means they're nice to me. <laughs> and that was the only thing I could relate. But then how much can you smile throughout the day? Yeah, it was pretty hard, but we got help. We had the um, sporting teachers. It was really nice, gentle, just trying to like make me relax and settled in. I loved how I could take content from school and apply it at home. They wanted to teach us our kitchen, like what's a pot called, what's a spoon called, this is a stove. And um, our teacher, our ESL teacher, uh, she got us to do a research first and then cook it. And she did the cooking, we just had to watch and she would explain it to us. This is a spoon, uh, this is a knife, this is flour, we'll mix water. And I remember going home and I used to force my siblings on the floor and I used to cook and I'd be like, this is spoon, this is pot, this is spaghetti. And my brother's like, I don't like spaghetti. And I used to tell her, too bad. You're gonna watch me cook because it's cooking time. So when I learned a few words or sentences, I was more confident to speak up in the classroom, in the main classroom, and do my homeworks without getting a lot of help from the teachers all the time. But um, at the start it was difficult, yeah. I had to go to the teachers every second with the homework especially, or writing like, you know, essays or anything like that, paragraphs or stories. Uh, I had to go to them. But then when I learned a few um, or basic sentences, I could write what I was thinking, express my words much more easier. The ESL program shaped who I am today. I feel it prepared me better because I had a, such a wonderful time in my primary school years, I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, I applied everything that we did at school, at home, with my siblings, my brother and my sister. And I used to always have this little made up board at home and write on it. When I graduated high school, I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher, but I finished Bachelor of Biomedical Science and I wasn't happy. So I applied for my master's in teaching at ACU and currently I'm studying. I was in EAL for three years and I was in grade six then. And then when I went to high school, I didn't need EAL anymore. I was straight into mainstream English. I knew the language by then. <laughs> I knew how to express myself, how to study more efficiently. Um, once I graduated from year 12, I went to university of La Trobe. I studied double degree of Bachelor of Health Science and Masters of Orthoptics, which is what I'm doing right now, orthoptics. 
We were one of the first um, uh, asylum seekers on the boat to come in 2000. I was seven, eight, and um, the boat driver lost its way. Uh, we ran out of petrol, ran out of food, ran out of um, the last, last stocks we had. We were going in circles. He had um, a getaway boat attached to the actual boat. So whenever they lose their way, they just jump on their boat and they, they go and then just leave you there. That didn't happen because it happened before and people sort of knew that that's what they do and none of us let that happen. Otherwise, we would have been stuck there, you know, God knows what have happened. In our country, in Pakistan, when, I, when we were there, we're basically just trapped in this one area that's just full of our people. We cannot go outside that area, otherwise you'll get killed. So that's how it was. And my dad, thinking about that, he was jobless. He didn't have anything um, to provide for us, food, anything like that. So he decided that he wanted to come to Australia and we would always like, oh, what? There's another country that exists, you know? <laughs> and that's when, you know, um, things started to change for us. So my dad came here in 2000 and we lived without him for five years. We didn't know where he was. Even if he was alive, I don't even know, like, you know. And then we came here, saw my dad, we reunited. Majority of people in Afghanistan, they don't live uh, long enough, you know, to see um, the world. You know, they don't have a very uh, long life because of uh, the really bad situation. Uh, being safe, um, being able to sleep in peace at night, you know, not, not, not sleeping in your bed thinking, oh, any minute something's going to land on your house, you know. That compared to here, when I sleep at home here, everything's so peaceful and quiet and it's just amazing. It was very hard for us to adjust at the start, definitely, until I started Daniel North. And that's when I started seeing that things can change. I felt that there was a connection and then I opened up and then they opened up and then, uh, yeah, it was, it, we just became like a family. I enrolled to the school in grade four and I literally had no English whatsoever. <laughs> it was a completely different place for me, different people, different language. I was just lost in my own world. First few days I hated it because um, I couldn't speak the language and I couldn't learn. Um, I just had to be there and learn from visuals, um, body language, looking at things, colours. When I first arrived I had a broken tooth and like my first two teeth were like broken and Miss McLaughlin she saw that and she thought oh the only reason she's probably not talking is because she's probably shy of her teeth and stuff and then uh, she got that fixed for me from the dental so it was basically they were like caring for me and all that and then she was always trying to develop that confidence in me. I just started feeling comfortable with them you know just talking back then I was really really shy. Um, so I just started really getting comfortable. Um, I would ask questions if I didn't know something. Normally I didn't ask, didn't talk, did nothing. I was just the quiet one, never talking, just shy. All the teachers were doing beyond what they were expected to do as a teacher. You know, um, it was like a safe place for me coming to school. All of the skills that I've um, gained from Dan Nung North just really, really helped me through my secondary college and uni finished my Bachelor of Arts in uh, Digital Media at Swinburne, which is in Hawthorne. And then for another year and a half, I did, um, I went to JMC Academy. I did a 3D uh, class over there, 3D programming. I am here because of EAL. Like I learned all my basics from there. I've learned uh, my language from there. I went to high school, but you know, it wasn't the same support as I had in primary school and uh, I took that from primary school and did my further studies in psychology. Um, and then now I work at Danny Nong North Student Agency. Recently we have a child that enrolled from Pakistan and literally I look at her and it just reminds me of how I was, you know. I've been through that and I know what it feels like for them. So yeah, being as a welfare coordinator, I could just like Danny Nong North Primary School teachers changed my life, I am there to change others. What makes me appreciate the most, I mean I've always appreciated what we achieved from our ESL program, is going through my placements. 
and seeing kids that are in different schools and they need that extra support and help. But unfortunately, some of those schools can't afford or are not aware. I'm not sure what's the reason. The kids are not getting and they're missing out. I understand that teachers need to cater for everyone's need. But how can you cater for a child who cannot speak and read alphabet? That's very difficult for a teacher. Now that I'm learning to become a teacher, I think I would struggle. That child needs a one-on-one -on -one sometimes conversation just to sit and have a normal chat. Doesn't have to be about content, doesn't have to be about knowledge. Just say, how are you? How are you feeling? It's very important because I feel like that helped me to go through the tough time that my family went. Just Miss Jenny sitting down and, you know, talking to us telling us, um, how are you feeling? Have you visited your mum? And... The EAL teachers, they got to know my family and myself more and they knew where I came from and what hardship I've been through. And they were more gentle and not that other teachers weren't gentle and nice, but they're all perfect. It's just that they had more connection and I felt more relaxed in that classroom. I could speak out more easily and whatever we learned in EAL, we could put it in practice when we went out into the playground, into the classroom. Just having a normal conversation of how are you feeling today? Are things better? What can I do? It makes a huge difference to that child's life to be able not to participate in some of your activities on that day just because something is holding you back. Emotionally, physically, you're not there and your teacher understands that and appreciates your minimum effort that you put in. It's important for a teacher. I think as a teacher, you need to teach the child everything. So you're the second mom or the second dad at school. You're teaching them how to behave what's the right thing to do, what's the wrong thing to do. Building a relationship with a child is very important as a teacher. And once all of those stuff are met, then you can easily teach the child the content. If those basic needs are not met, it will be very difficult for the child to achieve their best. Feeling very proud. Um, at times when I do have times I come and visit the school, I thank the teachers, Mr McKay, Mrs McKay, all the ESL teachers. I'd never forget that, you know. I'm always thankful because if it wasn't for them, if I'm just I'm just thinking if I was to be put in another school with no ESL programs, I don't know how things would be for me right now. I'll be sure struggling a lot. I feel like Australia has given me so much. The country, it's people, so I need to give back as well. Um, I'm not here just to take. I need to give back since I'm an Australian right now as well. Not just to the Australian people, those that come here, just like myself, we're all Australian. <laughs> um, we need to see each other as one. I do have students that tell me, oh, Miss Sobia, I want to be like you, you know, when I grow up, I want to be able to do all this stuff that you're doing right now. And it's just the most beautiful thing that, you know, you could get from a student. My mom, she has always been one of those people that would support you with your education. Go get the education, you need it, you know. Without education, you, you guys can't go anywhere and you have to learn the language. You have to be able to, you know, study and stand up for yourself and do everything that's, you know, that, that you can. And, and back in our country, we couldn't do that. We didn't have any education. We didn't have schools for girls. We did have for guys, but for girls, we didn't. And you know, coming here and seeing that girls can study and girls can do all this stuff. So we took that opportunity. One last ticket before it's gone One last summer before it's fall We had a good life in Pakistan, so but because of the terrorism we just decided, my husband decided to come to Australia. So he came in 2011 and then uh, by boat. And then uh, in 2013, my kids and I decided uh, we came in Australia. I moved uh, from Afghanistan to Pakistan and spent um, a, a long time there. And then uh, my husband came 
to Australia by boat and then he tried to organize for the whole family to come here and we were lucky we got the chance to come to a new country and have a safe life. To we have a mother's group in DNPS. When I enroll my boys in this school I start coming to my mother's group and I was a very uh, regular uh, member of uh, mother's group and I'm a good example of mother's group because I got job in, in uh, Dandenong North Primary School just because of mother's group. As a parent when I came to Australia I was lost and I was really worried uh, about helping my children as a mother. So the mothers come in the program and we show them especially the mothers they are new in Australia so we help them to uh, understand the um, education system or maybe the school environment, the learning and everything. And sometimes they come with uh, so many questions like they are, um, they don't know like uh, where to go for help if they uh, need to talk to the teachers, if sometimes they need help with filling in the forms. There are many things they don't feel comfortable to do and so they come here and we help them. Some mothers, they started with little English, or but now uh, they are um, working in Australian workplace. And it is a good opportunity and uh, to come to learn uh, things, to observe things, uh, to uh, get the ideas of others. Like uh, it's very uh, good for, especially for the new uh, mums uh, in a new country. When I enrolled my kids in a school, so one day I received a call that we have, uh, we have a mother group as well. So we invite all the new mothers if they want to come and join the mother group. So I first, uh, when I come, so it was really good. And from now it's uh, nearly five years. I'm continuously, I never fed off of the group because it's so very beneficial. Our own culture, it is totally different from the you know the English culture so it gives us some tips and some ideas how to raise our kids how to you know with our own values we can raise our kids but uh, help them adjust in a new country but in a good way. What's so wonderful is that they feel that they're um, connected with a community you know instead of being at home because I, I can't go and, and mix and join any other clubs, I don't understand the language. They come, we have interpreters for them if they require that, but they learn that they're not the only ones feeling, you know, lost in this new world. They're not the only ones that don't understand tenancy agreements. They're not the only ones that don't understand what this note coming home is saying to them. You know, and they've left their family overseas. They're here by themselves. It just alleviates a little bit of stress at home. It's better for the children too. When I came in Australia, I have no uh, family here, only my sister. So now I have a lot of friends and this is just because of mother's group. We came here, we sit together, we chat, and now I have a lot of friends. So it helped me to meet other people to meet other mothers and to know that their way, you know, their ideas, sometimes we share our ideas to how to deal with our kids, especially when they have, the kids have a bad time. And uh, not only the mother group also, uh, like a bridge connection, it connects us with the school. The parents often invite us into their homes, all of us in the EAL program and many of the teachers here too. The families are so grateful for what we do. They'll bring us food, they'll invite us around to their place to share their meals, they'll invite us to their parties and, and it's a lovely relationship that we have. And it's great to be able to experience their culture, to sit on the floor and things that we, you know, we don't usually do. Having Alia and Fatima here is great because they have a connection, someone who understands them. And I think if we, yeah, the school supports that. And it's so important because they've always been isolated from education in terms of being part of what their children do at school. And we welcome them in uh, with open arms and they're very, very grateful. And that's just such a bonus and, and the mothers just enjoy it so much. And, and it, connects them with each other and so they feel like a part of a school community. I feel myself a very lucky and uh, blessed to be a country where I feel safe, where I feel um, 
I can say my point of view to others and I can put my voice up to, for my rights and I feel so independent. When I compare myself to previous Alia when she was living in her own country and this Alia, this is, such, this is an, a different person. Proud of myself to help those people. They experience the same difficulties and same situations as, as I did. And when I'm helping them, I put myself in their shoes, in their place to help them in the same way as I was expected help from others, from my teachers, from people around me. So I, I try to help them in the same way to make life easier for them in a new country. And you're beating, beating on my job. If you can't communicate effectively within the language structures of the country that you live in, you are powerless. You have no say. You can't push you know, your needs forward. You, you can't fully participate within the community. Uh, you're always relying on others to do that for you. Communication is the key and EAL definitely is the door to, you know, to learn the language. Just reflecting back, I'm really proud that I could learn and to read and write, to speak as much as I can, uh, to be able to finish high school and actually get into a uni and get an education that I can help back to the community. I think that's something I'm very proud of. A lot of people can't go to school and I have the opportunity to, to complete my masters. I'm thankful for all these teachers and the principal, the whole school in general, just for being there when I came here. And thank God I came to this school and not any other school, you know. All the support that we had, not just myself, my family, we felt more like home. Um, we settled in much more easier. And if it wasn't for them, I don't know what, what we would have done when we came here. The way that Kevin and Jenny McKay lead the school and the expectations they have of their teachers and of the students. And I remember distinctly Kevin saying, treat the children as your own. And I think that's a wonderful philosophy to have and, 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 to, and to work through because that's what it is all about, isn't it? These children and making sure that they have the best possible advantage in their future learning. Everything that we do for them here lays a foundation for their future learning. And as an EAL teacher, we give them that gift. We give them that opportunity, that chance to be able to be part of society and community. I find that uh, the leadership team at DNPS are visionaries. They have opened their hearts to all cultures and they value, they value the differences, the linguistic differences, they value those cultural differences and they are very committed to providing and giving a good education to the community where it is most needed, which would make the most amount of difference to Australian society. We have around 60 different cultures at this school and even more languages, I think, because of the dialects. What I see Danny Dong North at is, is a small representative of the United Nations, you know, yet we don't have fights in the playground. And I think that bringing together different cultures, different religions, different perspectives on how we live our lives and actually working with that background core understanding within each individual just is, is so important. If we're going to have a safe and harmonious world, it's got to start with the children. And unless we can bring them together, and this is why I, I value um, the work that we do at this school and, and all public schools. We really bring together so many different cultural uh, backgrounds to form into one. So I think that we start to um, develop a greater understanding amongst mankind by having kids saying, oh no, my friend, he comes from here and they do this. Just by that opening up that communication is just a fantastic opportunity. It's about 
uh, facilitating their learning and it's about um, being a nurturer. So not only are you teaching children, you are also being their friend because you guide them as a friend. You're also being a mentor to them because they can come to you and ask for support and help. You're a coach as well because you coach them on how to behave in society and how to participate um, in games and with friends and how to build relationships. So for me, a teacher wears many hats. And I think finally being a teacher is being a role model. That's a very important aspect of teaching. I can't imagine not coming here every day and doing what, what you can for these amazing families. Coming as a migrant, we feel the need to give back to the community and establish roots here, giving them a good education and literacy skills so that they are productive citizens of Australian society. And uh, this is my way of giving back to the Australian society. If I can give them something that has them always believing in themselves, I think that's my biggest gift to them, if I can give them that. Every student that comes from a migrated family, they're struggling. There's their kids. You might feel like, oh, they're not thinking as deep, but they do. I did. You think very deep. You think about everything. How my parents are gonna cope? How am I gonna cope? Should I give up my studies and like help them? But to come to a school that they support you and you don't have to worry about that stuff, it's nice. You don't have to worry about anything but yourself. To be a child, um, to be able to learn and not worry about anything else, it's nice. I feel that each and every one of the children that passes through our program and passes through transition is my child. I don't call them my students, I actually call them my children. And I say to them all the time, I'm your school mum, you can come to me with anything. When they come back to me, it's like a little piece of me is coming back home, just if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it. I just love them. I, I love them. That's the only thing I can say. It is so rewarding working in EAL. I, I couldn't think of doing anything else. I wouldn't want to do anything else. And it's the best job in the world. What we want is to make sure that we can fulfil the family wishes and ensure the future of those children by making sure that they are, by the time they leave us ready for high school, that they are on par with their peers across the country, or within Victoria at least, um, if not above. And they've given up everything, the parents, to try to set up a new life for their students. And luckily, uh, this school is able to meet that need in a wonderful way. We have our EAL students coming back telling us I'm a medical researcher, you know, I'm a doctor, um, I've just started law, I'm teaching. We have ex-students teaching at this school, you know, which is fantastic. Some of those children started in the EAL program. So for them to be able to be teaching here and empathising and understanding the importance of a really quality education is just hugely important for our children. The ultimate purpose for our EAL program is to make sure that all our children that go through that program become strong and effective contributors to the Australian society. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight one of my favourite parts of Dandenong North Primary School is the fact that I used to be a student here and many of the teachers that I had as a student are still here teaching today and that just shows what a great place it is that we all stick around and you know keep doing the job for the kids. Everyone at DNPS is so caring, they're like lovely, they always are nice to each other and I think the teachers work so hard to help us have a successful life. I like the school because everyone's nice and like a family and they take care of you. We're friendly and we have a guidelines which make us like do the right thing and our teachers are 100%. When I grow up I want to be a doctor because I like to help people. Robotic engineer or a medical engineer. Engineer, that's like 
I designed robots. I want to be a dentist. Soccer player? A doctor. I want to be a racer. A doctor? A police officer? A teacher? Yeah, it's good if I want to grow up doctor because I want to help people. I really want to be a doctor. Teacher? An engineer? Type of scientist when I grow up? I really want to be a voice actor. A teacher? A teacher? A soccer player? An artist. I want to go to space and go to the moon. A nurse. A doctor because I don't, I don't want anyone to die. I want to help the homeless people. And after that, my career is going to be um, a teacher. I really want to be a successful lawyer So, because I love freedom, I love justice. I want people to be free and enjoy life. I want to save the world. A teacher like my teacher. I want to be a teacher like the teachers at this school. They didn't know no primary school. The greatest school in the world.